Hello and welcome to the show, Metamore's Emerging Technologies channel. And today we're going to be talking about, amongst other things, the world's most powerful superfood. Welcome to the show. This week we're talking about, amongst other things, the world's most powerful superfood, in broader terms, hemp. Uh, and my guest this week is Ramon. Ramon, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. So, before we get into the hemp and the superfood side of things, please tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Um, I'm originally from Venezuela. Yeah. I left the country when I was just about 17 years old. Yep. I went to live in the United States for some time. Yes. I. After I graduated as an engineer, I came back to work in Venezuela and I was directly involved in the oil and gas industry for right. over 16 years or so, yeah. until socialism took over the country yeah. and that's why the main reason I ended up in Australia. So there's a lot of people in Western Australia particularly that will identify with the oil and gas industry, it's a big part of our, of our um, economy here. Yes. Um, not so much the socialism though. So. That's not something we have as yet in, uh, or we'll probably ever have in Western Australia, to be fair. Uh, so but you ended up here in Western Australia um, with that engineering background. Uh, and then, please, tell us more. How did it progress on from there? Yeah, so just about in 2016, yeah. um, I ended up um, in Colorado. Yes. I went to learn uh, about this revolution that, that was happening. Yes. Um, and I... For personal reasons, I um, I understood that hemp was the right construction material to solve the homeless problem that is happening worldwide. Yeah. Um, particularly, I was motivated because when I was mm, getting divorced, I ended up mm, uh, also homeless. Right, and okay. yes, so. And when was that? Uh, 2015, okay. after I came back from from Europe. Yeah. Um, it was not for such a long time, but it was very uh, stressful and of very, course. especially when you come from countries such as South America, yeah. and up here in Australia, um, for one reason or another, well, like, and challenges life in life, yeah. I bounce back and here I am. So, remind, not to be too personal, um, homeless obviously a very challenging time I'm sure but how does one pick one pick oneself up from the homeless position to where you are now well like everything in life is a challenge yes you must overcome darkness to yes. get the light yes in every aspect of life you will find that the light and the darkness are dancing together so it's your choice to make the, the okay. path to get the what you need to do for yourself and others. Okay, so you chose the life? Yes, I okay. always choose the life. You always choose the life. Yes. And the life as well. And the life as well. <laughs> That's fantastic, thank you. Yes. So, Ramon, you've discovered now hemp in this journey that you're on. Um, what was it within hemp and, or the engineering side of it, perhaps, which is more your speciality, I understand, from a technical background, that makes you think or led you to the understanding that this could help solve some of the world's homeless problems and perhaps some other problems as well. What's the technical side of hemp that you find so um, so interesting, I should say? Uh, there is a link, uh, or a direct link, between marijuana mm. and hemp. Mm. I have been an advocate of marijuana since 16 years old. Yeah. No stigma in that regard. I, perhaps I might be the anti-image of a... Hippie, no hair. <laughs> I can empathize with yes. that, yeah, for sure. Yeah. However, um, I have understood the power of the plant yeah. and, and moreover, the, uh, significant, the significance that I learned what, what I learned, in, I'm sorry, I got there. But um, um, I learned in my trip in Colorado the 
something that shocked me in my soul because uh, just about in 26th of December 1992, if I recall well, the Soviet Union collapsed and suddenly millions of socialists understood that, oh my God, I was yesterday communist, now, now capitalism is good. Well, that is basically the same principle where, where I find the cannabis industry in this moment. Okay. Um, cannabis is, 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 is out of the blue, it's good for everybody. Yeah. And 81 years we have heard all countries on earth that have been telling us otherwise. It's been telling us for 81 years in exactly. the country that it's a bad thing. Yes. And it's a good thing. And it's a good thing. Right. Regardless, regardless of what the government keep mm. repeating themselves sure. as, a, as the uh, 100th syndrome monkey okay. is called, if I recall the right name. So we have been listening to the government repeating and repeating again and mm. stigma that is not right. Yeah. And I believe that uh, people with um, a certain knowledge or level of um, academic background have to start speaking out. Okay. And I believe that somehow I have that responsibility on myself yeah. to start spreading the, the word. Okay. So you're an engineer, you've, you've come across the product, um, you realized and probably all, perhaps always know that it's a good thing. Um, so tell us, explain to us how though, for, give us an example, um, perhaps the superfood or some of the, the engineering structural type of things, how it actually is better or does work. Well, the hemp, hemp itself is, a, is a, it's like a cow. Yeah. Everything that you get out of it can be used. Okay. Yeah. Um, but, well, but, um, but it's the power that the plant itself has. Mm -hmm. Uh, on regards of what can, how much good it can do for humanity. Okay. The first car ever built on Earth was from hemp. It was fueled from hemp. And if, a, if there is any doubt on the genius from Mr. Henry Ford, then we all have a problem. So let me just check my understanding. Henry Ford, the creator of, of the first um, production line, his first car was a hemp-powered car. Yes. Built from hemp. Yes. That's an amazing fact. Yes, okay. and well, well, it was in Colorado. I was also in this convention that yeah. I mentioned. It, it's called NOCO. Um, it is, uh, I saw a car completely built from hemp. It was an Audi. Audi, and, an yes, Audi built. An Audi built. Wow. And, and I, throughout, throughout my uh, further investigations, uh, I also learned that Mercedes-Benz, uh, Lexus, yeah. BMW, they, they are also preparing uh, prototypes for hemp cars. That's amazing. Yes, it so is. So in a couple of years' time, if all things being well, there could be hemp cars on the road. Yes. That's incredible. And as we speak also, there are universities in Europe and the United States that are doing batteries from hemp for cars and houses. Wow. But not Australia? Uh, Australia has uh, um, pretty much um, uh, research and development, but it's not as advanced as other countries. Okay. Yes. Um, so let's just take a moment to pause and come back to that. Um, some more exciting stories, perhaps, of the different things we can use hemp for. Thank you. talking to Ramon about hemp technology and hemp engineering. Um, so Ram Ramon, please, tell us more about the challenges that you're facing at the moment with regards to um, the stigmas, etc., in relation to hemp. And, uh, I would say that the main challenge you see, once again, the 81 years of darkness that, yeah. has, that uh, the most government has done a very good job. A lot of misinformation, you feel? Absolutely. Okay. They, there is, a, I would say, the social engineering behind all this stigma. Sure. Um, they keep bumping us that um, this is bad, this is bad, this is yeah. bad, and, and in fact, it's the other way around. Okay. And there is no politician, in, especially in Australia, that can challenge this. 
They keep repeating and repeating exactly what they have been taught to repeat. So if any good politician come on board, and you know, we can do a lot of good for a lot of people. Cannabis itself is a, it's, a, it's gotta be, uh, in order to grow successfully, it gotta be a link between the governments, the entrepreneurs, and the society itself. So sure. um, there's not any other way. We so, can, we, and so much land that we can, that we can grow and harvest in this country okay. with the uh, fantastic uh, competitive advantages that Australia have. I still do not understand why politicians are not actually doing the other way around, promoting him so we can get out from the social crisis and, this, and the economic crisis that we have. Okay. So I guess what I'm hearing is a lot of passion around this and a lot of belief, um, which is fantastic. Um, certainly I'm not a politician and, and, and I understand that you are, aren't yet. Um, I'll definitely vote for you if you ever want to go down that route. That's fantastic. I, I don't think I would go there. <laughs> Fair enough. So, so more along the challenge side of things, though. So you have information. You are an engineer by background. You, you've done your research as an engineer, good an engineer would, and you understand the different parts of this process or different parts of this, and parts of this plant that can be used in the real world. However, there's challenges in terms of information uh, or misinformation, we should say, coming the other way. Um, so there's a belief problem. Is that, yes. Is that what yes. Okay. Uh, believing, believing is not the same as knowing. No. When you know, you know. When you believe, believe. Belief is a perspective. When yep. you know, it's a fact. Yes. When you have a potential industry that can become a half a trillion dollars just in Australia. Half a trillion dollars. Half a trillion dollars wow. forecast. That's then a big, big that, number. Absolutely. Yep. Then we're talking that the numbers or the information is not coming to the right people. Okay. So you mentioned earlier about there needs to be a connection between society, politicians, and the entrepreneurs. Absolutely. Could you be that connection then, the information connection? I'm just trying to be a vessel for, for this to happen. I okay. am 56 years old, yeah. and all my intention is to make this happen. Okay. It's a journey of life. Fair enough. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> um, so... Next steps then in terms of providing information out there. Um, so you've done the research and you've gathered together information that you can share with people. Would that be absolutely, true? Absolutely, okay. yes. Very good. I, I um, actually, I I am I am keep being invited to uh, give his, his speeches or yep. the presentation, and I show the numbers. I share them with no problem at all. So Ramon, just reflecting on something you've said earlier, um, that this is something that could solve poverty and homelessness etc um how what how can we help support that i guess from a community perspective how can we come together um to achieve these outcomes what is the what is the solution to bringing that forward and making that work well my first suggestion would be that the our governments to give a break tax break to startups in this industry yeah that would be number one. Yeah. Um, we should promote more farmers to, to come on board. Yeah, okay. Yeah. With raw material, then we can have enough um, source to people to transform these natural products. And once again, with the competitive advantages that we have in Australia, we can flow the whole world with Australian products. Okay. No doubt about that. Fantastic. Okay. So... I guess I need to know a little bit more about the products themselves, what you can actually make with hemp. Can you tell me a little bit about the things that hemp can, can create? Absolutely. Number one is the food. The food, food yes. Uh, the food is uh, perhaps the most powerful source of uh, proteins, omega-3, and all essentials, minerals that, we, that human beings require. Yeah. As we speak in the United States, are, there are companies that are trying to produce this in a mass production matter. Yeah, uh, so mass my... production for food, for humans to eat. Yes, uh, okay. the, the, my network or my connections in the United States, they all bring to, to get this food to the 
uh, camps. Uh, and, uh, I'm sorry, my English is uh, I get a little bit. Uh, so the, uh, the, the, the camps where people are living that have been displaced from other countries, for example, yes, Africa or yes, the Middle East, yes, or, in, or South yeah. America as well as well. So it's happening. We can easily easily feed with high quality uh, proteins uh, to okay. to uh, anybody. And of course, hemp can provide the uh, the raw material for for textile yeah. or for build houses. So you can build a house out of hemp? Yes, okay. yes. And actually, but how safe would that be? Uh, uh, from the engineering perspective, yeah. uh, hemp uh, is, or hempcrete, is yeah. perhaps uh, the most advanced and powerful construction material on earth. It is breathable, yeah. it's, uh, it is fire resistant, which is perfect for our for our fire problems in, yeah, in yeah. the forest. We do have a lot of problems with fires, yes, it's very true. It's anti-termite, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's perf perfect for the Australian uh, environment. Okay. Yes, so among we, other things. So we can eat it, we, oh. can, we can build out of it and live in it? Yes, it's like, uh, and also hemp is medicine, yes. also a body care. Um, can, yeah. Yes, so the, the the products that we can get out of it is once again can be converted into a billionaire uh, industry for all. Okay, so I guess it's going to take some entrepreneurial mindsets to engage um, with the concept that actually the information that's gone through previously, as you mentioned, the last eighty-one years is incorrect. Yes, to make up their own minds around um, the information that perhaps through yourselves we can get access to. Yes. And then make informed decisions based on that information. Yes. Okay. And then the, I guess the rewards for doing that might be um, to summarise what you've already said um, to achieve greater things for other people in yes. terms of food, in yes. terms of places to live. Yes. Um, and there's also, um, which which is something that's needed in, in almost every society, is the financial reward as well. Yes. Yes. And absolutely. Can, okay. Um, I, uh, but moreover, as we speak. Um, uh, we, the cannabis industry as a whole, is expecting to uh, the United States Congress to mm. pass what they call the Hemp Bill. Once that is passed, I, the expectation that the worldwide map of the cannabis trade will completely change, primarily because the Americans has a very strong technology uh, under the under the leaf. Yeah, they. Like I said, Henry Ford started this revolution 81 years ago, okay. and they have that technology. Universities have that technology. It's just a matter of the right moment just to put it out in the market. Okay. Well, that sounds fascinating. What yes. we'll do is we'll take a break there for a moment, and then when we come back, we'll talk more about the medical um, benefits of, of cannabis and the hemp plant, if that's Absolutely. okay. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> We have Ramon here today talking to, talking to us about hemp engineering and we're just about to go into some further detail with regards to the medical benefits of hemp and cannabis. So Ramon, please tell us more about that side of the plant. Uh, perhaps no, my, I might not be the best um, uh, person to talk about that because I don't have a medical background. Do you know someone that does? That we absolutely, absolutely. Uh, that might be... Um, one of my colleagues and one of my social my okay. business partners. We'll, we'll ask them to come in and speak to us as well one day. Absolutely, they would be more than willing to help. However, uh, the findings what cannabis uh, does on cancer, yes, and anxiety, depression, lower yeah. back pains, yes, is no. There's no comparison with the chemicals that is being issued by the pharma industry. So I understand very little about that side of myself. I do know that, for example, paracetamol, which is one of our most powerful painkillers, was actually found by accident on chlorine on 
bread, I think it was. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a history of, of uh, plants providing under actually what are now termed as chemical names, benefits, medical benefits. Aspirin, I believe, is another name for white willow bark. Yes. Um, so it's not unexpected that there's medical benefits from this plant. But can you tell us, do you know more about the um, uh, studies in terms of the information or the incidental information, perhaps if not university studies, around the benefits of the plant itself? Yes, absolutely. Uh, um, I, there are evidence that the United States government has a patent on the medical benefits right. of the plant itself. Um, yeah. has been actually kept in, under the table wow. for years and years and years. It's, it's not that I'm saying it, it is public information. Yeah, we can that search is, for patent information, can't we? Absolutely, yeah, okay. absolutely. But what about cigarettes then? Because cigarettes is the current legal option if you wanted to, to smoke something, I guess, which is being phased out. It was originally a, a very good thing for everyone, it's not a problem, and then it turns out it causes cancer. But in all that time, cannabis, cannabis has been in the background, and it's a, it's a medical benefit, but but it's been kept away from us, is that right? Do I understand that correctly? Yes, that's basically it. Really? Um, for whatever reason, the yeah. government has chosen to, to, to keep the population ignorant. Okay. So I guess there'll be some people out there, though, like with any emerging technology, it's a new thing. Anything that is new can be, um, or anything that's unknown can create a certain amount of fear. Yes. Um, an example, not for today, but an example might be digital technologies in, the, in terms of blockchain and cryptocurrencies and digital currency and that side of things. So is it the, the case that if we start growing hemp as, a, as an industrial product for helping, um, uh, helping grow or provide homes and food, etc., that there's going to be some kind of medical problem or um, a, an overabundance of, of cannabis in society? Is that, is that a problem in itself? I believe that... Um and that is an answer that the future history will be unfold one way or another. And all I know is that in this moment, uh, cryptocurrencies, hemp and artificial intelligence, mm. they go hand by hand. Right, okay. There is not, I don't foresee a different future. Yeah. Um, Perth itself can live, can, you know, once the mining is yeah. over or something, yeah. and hemp will be here forever. Okay. Um, we can create an industry yeah. for it to support the city or sure. the country itself. And is there more than one type of hemp, or is that every hemp plant that's grown is the same as every other hemp plant that's grown? Uh, there there are, the same things? Yeah, there are 2,000 varieties or strains yeah. of cannabis. Yeah. Cannabis is the plant itself. Yeah. Um, is the way you grow, yeah. then you get medical marijuana yeah. or recreational marijuana yeah. or hemp. Yeah. It is the same plant. The only difference is the THC content between between both. What's THC? THC is uh, the component that gets you high or okay. drunk. Right, okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, but there are other 20, 266 uh, ingredients or components. Sure. I do understand from our scientists uh, that work uh, or are collaborating with the company yeah. that only just about 30 ingredients has been identified. Wow. Only 15 has been named. Wow. So we're basically scratching the surface of what we know. Okay. In another uh, uh, saying, if I may, I can say that we know about the plan 95% of ignorance. Wow. That's so amazing. what we know is nothing yet. No. Well, if they are looking for a name for any parts of the plant, I'm very happy for them to call it John Hamilton. That's not a problem at all. I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, However, there is another component that is the revolution that has opened the doors okay. for the cannabis to grow, uh, which is called CBD. Yeah. CBD is, is widely used in the United States for cancer and other treatments. and. Yeah. and and it's been used to overcome the opiate uh, crisis that they have. Yes. That can somehow help also Australia in okay. that regards. So Australia ha appears to have a little bit of a problem um, with regards to, or a problem at least with regards to uh, methamphetamine. Yes. Um, that is a drug problem in Australia that's known. Is there any studies or, or links between um, cannabis or hemp being able to help people 
who are um, addicted to methamphetamine. And what I learned from the studies that are that is that are happening in the United States, studies, uh, yeah. cannabis is, is considered considered a gateway for um, um, this kind of people. Yes, yeah. it's, who have that kind of chemical addictions yeah. and uh, helps to regulate or cure them um, somehow. So in terms of, as a gateway, not as a gateway in, but as a gateway out. So someone who's addicted out. to methamphetamine, um, perhaps with help through the cannabis yes. um, and hemp program, might be able to come away from methamphetamine. Yes. And in, in, in the process of doing so, gain the medical benefits that we are hearing about with regards to, to cannabis and hemp products yes. as well. Uh, and the problem of drugs is, like advanced countries in Europe, uh, yeah. is considered a social problem yeah. rather than a, a crime problem. Yeah, okay. So the, it all depends what the politicians want to do. Sure. Their stigma, what they think. Yeah, okay, that's great. Um, so if I wanted to grow hemp myself, um, which it sounds like a very interesting thing to do, um, what's the process? Can I just go and buy some and start growing? Oh, no. Um, <laughs> okay. uh, my, my suggestion is that you first hire us. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We help you to uh, obtain the license or procure the license. Yes. You, the, the, what I like about Australia is that the, they enforce the laws uh, properly on yeah. this regard to assure the quality of the outcome, which yeah. is something that I feel very happy for that. Yeah. You've got to go the follow the process. You, yeah. There is a process implemented by the by the government itself, yes. but at the same time, help us to to compete in the global market. We sure. we we in this is in this moment, China, uh, Canada, Europe, each one of those con regions or countries, they they produce each one of those just about seventy thousand hectares per year. 70,000 hectares per, per year. year. Each wow. one of those. So, and yeah. they started just 10 years ago with wow. 10 hectares. Yeah. So uh, there is the potential is uh, uh, um, Australia to compete mm. in the global market yeah. have to start looking. Start fast. It's not just fast, but aggressively looking ourselves in the mirror and says, yeah. are we in the right track or are we going to keep lying ourselves? So we're going to take a quick break now, but when we come back, we're going to ask Ramon to tell us how he and his team help people start their own hemp business. because in a little while we're going to be talking about the hemp supermarket. But before we go down that, Ramon, please tell us more about the uh, ways in which people can get involved in hemp and, and the products that, um, that uh, you can help, help them produce. Yes, I am. I, uh, I originally, my main purpose, or it's still the purpose, is to promote the business mm -hmm. for entrepreneurs to come on board. Yeah. Um, it is it is it is the hardest part um, to get people on board and, yeah. and, and to believe into the to believe into 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 the this potential industry. No, I'm sorry. Um, uh, having said that, um, it is up to every individual to I would say to come out of the closet mm -hmm. <laughs> somehow. Um, the numbers indicate that there are over 1.5 million people that smoke weed every single day in Australia. No. Yes, so <laughs> if you convert, if you multiply that, and I'm talking in the bracket of 25 years, um, 54 years old. Yeah. So when you get that 1.5 million, and you multiply by the $60,000 income media, then you're talking just about $150 billion. Okay potential industry so, or economy. That's amazing. So actually people can get involved, they can do good, they can be part of something really exciting, and there's potentially some decent remuneration for them along the way as absolutely, well. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. 
I wish I can have all the answers how can I could grow as a big corporation, but I don't have it. Yeah. I am new in the entrepreneur uh, business. Sure. I have been working for large corporations and companies for a long time. Yeah, how large? Uh, you don't want me asking. Uh, big. Big. Yes. So um, sort of, uh, can you put a dollar figure on the size of projects that you worked on previously then? Uh, I have been involved um, building refineries, yeah. and designing and building refineries, refineries. In, the, in the order of thirty billion dollars, wow. forty billion dollars. When I was in Venezuela, when okay. after I got out from Venezuela, then for one reason or another, I have been lucky enough to be uh, hired to collaborate in those projects as well. Okay. Mm. Well, some of them successful, some of them you know. Sure. <laughs> so I, I happen to believe that people make their own luck. Um, so there's obviously something you've done, decisions you've made, um, part of, of who you are, that people have wanted to engage and work with you, and I can definitely see that myself. Um, I'd be delighted to learn more about that and more about the Hemp Project uh, and the Hemp Revolution. So, and I guess, actually, in terms of, of people's belief in others, no one puts a $30 billion project in the hand of someone that they don't feel is capable of doing that, and you've delivered successfully on those projects as well. I've been part of the team. Yeah. The team is a, is a um, but yes, it's not just about one person. It's no. a lot of people who are involved in this. It's not just one person. Okay. And just part of the project management team. Part mm -hmm. of the project management team. Awesome. Yes. So, so you're going to help people project manage their own projects? Yes. Okay. That is the principle. And on, on that regard, it's like any other project. You yeah. need to estimate. You need to create your, your scope of work, uh, do the contracts, yeah. and do the schedule. And... But it's up to the the hardcore of the project management team to deliver this okay. as it should. But you've delivered successfully as part uh, of a team thirty billion dollar projects. Uh, it's like I said, it's not just me. It's yeah. other. Of course. It's, yes, it's uh, the people that are more knowledgeable than me that can have leadership in that that kind of wow. magnitude. Yes, that's fantastic. Very yeah. impressive. So Ramon, let's take a step forward. Um, you've met some entrepreneurs, let's say, um, they've successfully engaged with you as project manager in regards to building their own um, companies and businesses around the hemp product, or the products from hemp, I should say. Uh, how are they going to distribute that? There's no, as far, I've not seen any hemp shops, there's no there's no people selling hemp as far as I can tell by the side of the roads. What's the distribution network look like? The distribution network is... In fact, it's not just a distribution network. It's a integrated vertical company that goes from the farmers. Yes. But not even the farmers. It starts in the scientific background yeah. of getting the proper genetics in the seeds yeah. to be adapted to the soils. Yeah. Then that is in, is that knowledge is given to the farmers. Yeah. Once the far once the crop is obtained then that is passed to a manufacturing process to get the raw material, yeah. and then you get the final products. Okay. And the final products is where hemp supermarket is um, expecting to, to play a role because I, my dream is that that would be the platforms for Australian products to be sold overseas. Okay, so I've seen a Woolworth supermarket, I've seen a coal supermarket, I haven't seen a, a hemp supermarket. Where is the hemp supermarket? Uh, it's online. Oh, it's online. Yes. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Fair enough. So, yes. so there's a hemp supermarket online, so I can be also, I can buy products from the hemp supermarket yes. online? Yeah. Okay. Yes. And if I'm a producer, I can sell through yes. the hemp supermarket? Absolutely. Okay. So Absolutely. there's a total distribution network already in yes. place? Exclusively for hemp products. Exclusively for hemp products. Yes. Are you aware of any other industry that has the same integrated system? Right. Of course, the oil and gas, oil and gas. mining. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. Yes. Coffee. Absolutely. Wow. Yes. Okay. Coffee. Coffee is a worldwide. That is the dream. Yeah. Okay. Yes. The dream is that eventually we can have coffee shops, uh, that where we can serve hemp milk. Okay. Uh, where we can distribute hemp food. Yeah. And reach as many people as we can. Isn't that already in place somewhere in the world? No. Uh, there are, like in Europe, some yeah. coffee shops, like yeah. in Ireland. Yeah. Uh, America is trying to do the same now with the uh, with the legalization of cannabis in Canada. Yeah. Um, this, uh, the distance is gonna boom. <laughs> so let me so. check my understanding. There's, there's a the Canada cannabis and hemp is an entirely legal product now. Yes. Uh, starting in mid October, it will be fully legal. 
That's amazing. Yes. So, Ramon, there's, there's a couple of products that um, we've spoken about um, prior to the interview today. Um, I just want to reflect back on because they're absolutely fascinating. Those two products are, if you don't mind, uh, hemp milk. Can't imagine how you get the, how you get to milk a hemp plant, but okay. And also, is there such a thing as hemp honey? I think that's something you mentioned previously. Absolutely. Okay. Well, um, uh, hemp milk is perhaps the easiest thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. The, you, you, you mix it with water, and that's basically it, and you blend it. Um, okay. Yes. Does it taste okay? Uh, it tastes fabulous. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, but more important is the content of what it does for the health. Yeah. One simple glass gives you enough, everything that you need for the day. One glass gives you everything that you need for the day? Yes. So this, How much does that glass cost, for example? I don't know. Um, is uh, it $1,000, $10? Uh, you're putting me in a, in a very complicated place. I am, place. yes. Um, uh, this is real what I'm telling you, you know? Yeah, okay. uh, uh, I just find, found out yesterday yes. that a Spanish company is bringing him milk on board. They're selling it for seven dollars per liter, for liter, yeah. and that is basically how much it costs to produce it in Australia. Wow! So I I do understand that the compet competitors are selling uh, a liter for fourteen dollars. Yes, but uh, with mm, the problem is that we don't grow enough in Australia to be com competitive. Okay. We would would be able to change this, then we can we can certainly be competitive or anywhere. So it's not ridiculous anyway. So it's somewhere between seven and fourteen dollars for a liter of this milk, um, that provides some fantastic health benefits. Yes, fair enough. Yes, and the honey. Oh well, honey, honey is some beyond the fact that it's a that is a, um, a great business by itself. A it business. Is, yes. Okay. It is the fact that uh, the um, mixing cannabis with honey, uh, there is no competition for the health benefit that you can any person can get, okay. from cancer to you name it. So it's one of the best, best things to have for to for health yes. and for people that are potentially very seriously ill. Yes, okay. yes, and and, and um, by creating a potential business sector in honey yes. and cannabis, mm. uh, you're solving a, a double problem that the ecosystems are facing in this moment, which is, which is the bees dying because they don't have enough, because of the, the, the fertilizers and, yeah. and what they spray in the crops. Yeah. Uh, so it's a horrible that's what's happening. But surely hemp has the same problems in terms of fertilizers and all that side of things? Not really, because oh. uh, the hemp does not require, requires a special treatment yeah. for when, when you're, when you're uh, farming. So it's organic? It's not just organic, it doesn't require as much fertilizer sand. And it's not fertilizer, my brother, it's a yeah. pesticide. Pesticide, okay. Pesticide. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. a pesticide, it does not require pesticide. Wow. Um, it's, uh, by itself, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, insect, insect resistant. Yeah. So um, the... That's amazing. Is, it is, yes. Okay. Let's take a break there, and we'll come back and talk to more about that in just a minute. <laughs> yes. Okay. We're just going to finish off our conversation with Ramon today where we've been talking about hemp engineering and the benefits of, of cannabis and hemp. Um, so obviously there may be some controversy around one of the two words that I used there and it wasn't the hemp word. So I'd just like to say thank you Ramon for taking the time today. For obviously sure. a massive, massive part of the benefit of being in Australia um, as one of uh, the leading countries in the world with regards to regulation and freedom of speech is that we can have these open conversations yes. and talk about our opinions and the information that we can provide so 
that's a great part of being here. Freedom of speech is such a such an important. Absolutely, important thing. this kind of speech anywhere else good. You good end up being in jail after you get out of the interview. <laughs> <laughs> no, there'll be no jail after the interview today. So. No, no, absolutely not. No. Mm -hmm. um, so, in terms of next steps, I guess um, there's going to be lots of people who who have had their eyes opened, so to speak, with regards to the information that you've been able to provide us today, and we'll have lots of questions and things. So, what I was going to ask you, Ramon, is is can we perhaps um, bring you back to perhaps do a presentation or a webinar or put on some events and things where you can perhaps share your information with more people in more detail uh, absolutely, later today? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely, and more. Okay. And for this, okay. and for this, and for the awareness for people to come yeah. on board. Yeah. The the dream is to to have an entrepreneurship network yeah. Yeah. for this business of its own and yeah. and compete. Okay. That's it. Look, talking about competition is where things get messy, sure. uh, which I do uh, as a citizen. Yes. It makes me uh, uh, wonder exactly where we are standing up. Uh, cannabis should have exactly the same freedom as any other product on earth. Yeah. We should have a free market to compete yes. for the best. People should be able to grow their own to yeah. show their quality, yeah. what they're able to do, yeah. so they can grow in the market itself. Yeah. And that's that's the way it should be done. Okay. I don't really understand why we have to keep saying that we're capitalists, but we're acting like communists. Sure. It doesn't make sense. No. We either you are either free or you're a slave. Okay. Okay. Well, that's that's a very emotional statement, which and I hear you completely. Um, I certainly believe that there is um, plenty of opportunity out there for doing good um, and still uh, it being a community-led, community benefit, um, financial remuneration as well. Yes. It doesn't, making money doesn't necessarily mean that somebody else is losing out. Exactly. It could be the way, it has to be the way going forward for ourselves and for our children and for our children's children Absolutely. that we work towards achieving, um, achieving good things but still achieving financial returns at the same time. Yes. You know, there, yes. there has to be the balance between the two. Yes. And more important is that uh, the community, the, the, the way that we can grow within the community, yeah. it can make a big difference for all. That sounds like an opportunity for a couple of jokes. Grow within the community, we'll try and grow within the community some hemp. One of the key elements with hemp, um, which is the most promising product that can be implemented in the market yeah. is the is for paper. Hemp is that it's hemp let me ex, let me see if I can put it rightly. One hectare of hemp can produce or I don't want to say one tree will grow twenty years to produce X amount of paper. Yeah. Hemp can produce three times more than one hectare of trees yeah. in ninety days. Wow. Using less water. Yes. And we still have a high quality paper. But, okay. And, and in terms of the carbon dioxide, I guess, which is a byproduct of plants growing, if they're growing at a faster rate, then they're chewing up more carbon dioxide, effectively, and turning it into oxygen. Would that be fair to say? Um, which is one of the most fantastic uh, uh, key elements in here. Hemp is carbon negative. Yes. And it helps the environment. My, one of my key uh, uh, motivations mm -hmm. to work in the hemp industry is yep. that I'm at the personal perspective and understanding yep. that we can change the world yep. for better and we can stop contaminating the world yep. and we can stop the pollution and we can use the trash, plastic trash that is everywhere. Yep. We can transform it in plastic hemp yep. that can be used for anything. That's amazing. Europe is currently considering hemp, plastic hemp to build chips. Ships? Yes. Wow. And um, it's being considered for the aero, aerospace industry as well. Wow. So, so we, we have a strong need for shipping here in Australia. Yes. And we have, I believe, in Western Australia just about to start off a space program as well. Yes. Um, so these are key, key things to the Australian government at the moment and the community and, and the people of Western Australia and Australia um, more widely. Um, and plus the fact that since in January the 1st, 2018, China yeah. has banned importing 
uh, trash yes. from Australia. Yeah. These are outstanding opportunities for... For doing good. Yes. Okay. Well, I know that there's going to be lots of people watching today that want to get involved, so we will support and make sure that we're doing everything we can to provide them links and information um, or links to information even so that um, we can introduce people to you. Um, so we'll make sure we have that ready for you as well. Um, and personally, I, it sounds like such a fantastic opportunity that after after the, the interview today, let's go and um, we, won't have, we won't smoke anything, but let's go and talk about him and find out perhaps if something I can get involved in personally as well. Welcome on board. Thank you, man. Brilliant. Thank you.